The following presentation, Your Power Moment, is brought to you by JLS Ministries, Incorporated. this morning is based upon this incredible hour we're in. We're living in an incredible time. These are almost the best of times and the worst of times. It's an incredible time because it's great joy for so many, and yet there's so many experiencing great tragedy. We've had a lot of things happen in our world, in our society, all types of uh, tornadoes, all types of gas, uh, climate changes, so many things of economic upheaval, as well as moral fiber of our society is even being challenged. But I want you to know in your moment, you've got to define what it is you're going to be. You've got to own this moment. Not allow things to change you, but you to change the things by the power of what you believe. I want to go to the word of the Lord this morning in the gospel according to St. Luke. One of the critical synoptics that God has given us. Synoptic gospels, of course, being those first four gospels in the Bible. They being the books where we have the parallelism of the ministry of Christ. Critical. Because when I see what Christ does, I know how to walk out my life pattern and how I can overthrow the various attacks that come against my life. So we see Christ's teachings in the gospel according to St. Luke, who is the physician of the bunch, if you will. He gives us the most picturesque view of what the ministry of Christ consisted of. And in chapter 8 of St. Luke, we're going to find a storyline that I think speaks to the fabric of of what our challenge is today. There is a ruler in about verse 41. There is a ruler by the name of Jarius. And Jarius being a ruler was always someone already of potentate, if you will. He had a political prowess about him. But it was interesting that when you're introduced to Jarius, the first thing you see is that he's a worshiper. The Bible says in verse 41 of Luke 8 that Jarius, now being a ruler of the synagogue, he comes and does something unusual. Because it says, Jarius fell down at the feet of Jesus and besought him that he would come to his house. That's interesting. Because you have someone who has a title, someone who has significance, finding themselves falling at the foot of Jesus. That's the power of our real significance. No matter what your title, no matter what you're going through as it pertains to who you are in hierarchy, when we have a challenge, our titles don't matter. It doesn't matter if I'm an attorney, if I'm a judge, if I'm a lawyer, if I'm a preacher, if I'm a bishop, if I'm an usher, no matter what I am, when I'm going through something, my title is not relevant. What's relevant is what I need. And until what you need outweighs who you are, you're never going to get what we need in God. Jesus was teaching Jarius something, and Jarius fell at the foot of Jesus to recognize that no matter who I am, it's what I need that has more pertinence. And I'm speaking to somebody right now who's tuned in, who said, even though I am who I am, what I'm going through seems to override that. So I want to speak to what you're going through. He falls at the foot of Jesus and becomes a worshiper. And it doesn't matter, honestly, what your level of relationship is with God. If you learn how to worship him, to make him worth e, <laughs> worth of your time, worthy is what we call it, make him worthy of your time, then he indeed will respond to you. Jarius said to him, my daughter, my only daughter, has been sick for 12 years. There's somebody who's tuned in right now. You have an exclusive need. This was his only daughter, exclusively. She was the apple of his eye. Our daughters represent our dreams. See, our sons represent our legacy, our future, the line of the family. But daughters represent the dreams. And so daddy's dream was in trouble. His dream was in jeopardy. Some things that we've been dreaming about, some things in our life that meant so much to us, they are now at great risk. We're in a critical hour, and this is not time to play. People don't understand, I think, the devastation that independently we're looking at. But Jarius had the key. He said, Jesus, I need you to reverse this. 
Now, I want you to know that she was 12 years old. 12 is the number of change. Jarius understood that. He understood that at 12, I get my greatest opportunity to transition into something new. That's why we operate by 12. Isn't it interesting that at watch night each year, 12 is the only time at the end of 12 months we get a time to end what's happened and go into a whole new cycle of living. Time is dominated by 12. We live in 12 segments. We have 12 a.m. and 12 p.m., 12 anti-meridian, 12 post-meridian. And after every one, we shift into another time frame. 12 is the rite of passage, age of life. After 12, you become an adult. A boy becomes a man. He begins training at 12 into 13. 13 is where he gets training to now become a man. It's called bar mitzvah in some of our religious settings. This is a critical time. You're in a 12th cycle. God is doing something major. That's why this moment you have to own. You have to take the opportunity to say, this is my moment of transition because 12 is where God has me. And the Bible records that Jesus agrees with him. This is the moment of change. I'm coming to your house to make a transition. One of the critical mistakes we make with this text in St. Luke is we look at the next part and give it the highlight, the woman with the issue of blood. But it is not the woman with the issue of blood I want to discuss because he does, he spends the next four or five verses healing the woman with the issue of blood who actually interrupts Jarius' miracle. But what I want to pull your attention to is verse 49. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. Now remember, in verse 42, Jesus agrees to come and heal her. So from, so from verse 42 to verse 48, the woman with the issue of blood gets a miracle. Jarius is stuck doing what, and this is what God has given me for your life today. Jarius is stuck dealing with living in the middle between when Christ says he's going to do a miracle and between when it actually happens. He experiences a turnaround. His bad goes to worse. I want to speak to somebody today who is in the middle of a bad going to worse. Everybody's not in an ideal situation. But God has anointed me apostolically to speak hope into your life because he is going to give you strength to make it through the middle. This is the process. This is the word for the day. Strength to survive my middle. It's already bad, and I don't know how he's going to get me from what I'm in to what he's promised. But what is going to happen is he's going to give me strength in the middle. Nobody deals with Jairus' moment. He has to wait while he's healing the woman with the issue of blood. He has to stand there and believe that God is going to do what Christ is going to do, just what he said he's going to do. And the whole time he's watching other things happening. There were people who have heard the word, who believe what God said, but you are experiencing a process in the middle. I want you to pay attention to this because the moment that you're in has the power to overthrow everything that's up opposing to what God has said. Two things are clear. One, we're in a time that is unprecedented. Two, that God is going to deliver and open up a door of miracle. What we need is the strength for the middle. God, teach us to have hope. Hope is the key. How do I make it in the middle, apostle? Hope is what you have to keep. This is where we learn to act in our faith. You will never see in the text where it says Jairus caught an attitude or Jairus was upset. What you will see is that a message came to try to discount what Christ had already said. Christ said, I am going to come to your house. Jairus knew the miracle was about to happen. He knew his daughter was about to transition. The 12 years of pain was over. He knew the struggle was ending. As many of you know, something is getting ready to happen. I don't know what, but something's getting ready to break for me. But what Jairus had to do was not let what was said change what he knew. The man said, don't trouble the master. Your daughter is dead. He brought a word of finality. Don't let what the enemy puts as a final word be a power against what Christ has said. The devil does not get the last word in your life. Good God. I feel the power of God right there. This is the miracle of the day. The devil does not get the last word in my life. 
He does not get to end my story. As a matter of fact, I wish I had a book because I feel like flipping the page right here. Where the devil thinks the book is ending, the chapter is just getting ready to begin. What's ending is the chapter of my defeat, the chapter of my struggle, the chapter of my process. But if you flip the page, you're going to discover that the next chapter is where God opens up the promise. I speak to you today, the ordained strength to make it in the middle. The devil didn't know it, but you will not get stuck in the quicksands of your pain. I reverse the polarity of that which was going to pull you down. And I speak now the revelation that moves you into a new day. This is your power moment. And in this moment, we declare and decree that something magnificent is going to happen. Your greatness is about to come out. You're about to be invincible. You're an inevitability. Nothing can stop you. You cannot be reversed. I speak to calamity, and I call your crisis now conquering. You are now victorious. You are not in tragedy. You are in triumph. And I pray you would scream it with me that this is my power moment. I own it. I change the course of my pain, and I walk into my promise. Jarius said, I'm going to trust Jesus because the Lord came right behind the word. When the man said, your daughter is dead, Christ said, be of good cheer. She is not dead. She's just been put on pause while I worked out stuff. I got a miracle word for you today. God is ready to push the pause button and play on into your future. They thought it was over. They thought it was done. But the pause button is coming off and your future is about to launch. I am so excited about what's ready to happen to you. We've got to seal this moment. This moment has to be sealed because I've got to get my actions to match my moment. I can't be depressed. I can't be down. I can't speak what does not match my moment. Everything in my life has got to speak to what God is saying. And he is saying, your dream is going to live. I'm going to go and reverse what the enemy tried to do while you were in the middle. While you were in the middle, the devil tried to kill your future. But it's over now. God is about to redeem you. I want you to get everything in your life to match it. Two things Christ is doing. One, he is giving you grace. One, two, three, four, five. Five is the number of grace. He is giving you grace in the middle. Two, he is giving you completion. He's getting ready to complete the work. Seven is the number of completion. So you're going to have grace and completion working in your favor. Grace and completion working in your favor. That's five and seven. For 75,000 people that are listening to me right now, they're going to see a $57 seed. You better hear what I'm saying because lives are getting ready to change. This is crazy, apostle. Why would you talk about seed right now? Because I just heard the Holy Ghost said the seed in their life is getting ready to seal the movement of my promise. 57, 5 and 7. I don't want you to give arbitrarily because your seed must match your moment. I want your seed to have purpose. My seed not only has an assignment, my seed must have purpose. There's somebody believing what God is speaking right now, and you know this word has changed your life. I want you to prepare a $57 seed. There is information on the screen. You can send it in. You can PayPal it. You can Visa. You can uh, uh, put it in a check form, whatever you need to do. But I want your seed to match your moment, $57. Somebody's going to plant a $50, $57 seed and covenant with me. Now watch this. For 12 months straight, 12 is the number of change. For 12 months, $57 a month. Watch God work a miracle. For 12 months, $57 a month and watch the miracle happen. Something great is getting ready to happen. Don't you miss this moment. I'm getting ready to pray and speak over your life that things would take action right now. Make sure that you take the time to connect with Dr. J. Lemuel Spence in the following ways. Contact him via the telephone, toll free, 1-800-866-8780. You can contact him via the World Wide Web at www.apostlespence.org. Get connected with his local ministry, Greater Word Empowerment Church, by visiting greaterwordempowerment.com. And you can leave him an email to receive newsletters, dates of engagements, and covenant partnerships at jlsministries at gmail.com. Make this a moment that keeps...
keeps your hand on the pulse of what God is doing next through the life and the ministry of Dr. J. Lemuel Spence.